Hello, Gray Steel Nation. Sully here with the Barbell Prescription, keeping you strong, healthy, vibrant, and alive in your 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. Thanks for joining us and subscribing. Here's an assignment. Go and find a seesaw, or some reasonable facsimile thereof, and set it rocking. Hell, if you have a friend, you can actually take a seat and rock it together. Maybe it's been five or six decades since you sat on a seesaw, in which case it's long overdue. But reconnecting with your inner child is not the assignment. For this week's homework, I want you to make both sides of the seesaw go down at the same time. Try harder next time. But seriously, folks, this is one of those things that just doesn't happen in our universe. Seesaws see, or teeter, on one end, and saw, or totter, on the other. It's one of those things you just have to take into account. Like, two objects cannot occupy the same space at the same time, and kittens become cats. Money doesn't grow on trees, and you can't always get what you want, even if you're Mick Jagger. When you squat, you are a seesaw or if you prefer, a teeter-totter. The fulcrum is the hip, so one end of the seesaw is much shorter than the other, unless you have a very big butt, but you are a seesaw in any case. Now, this has implications for how you achieve the bottom position at depth, or not. Now, everybody in the universe will recall from my internationally famous and world-changing video, Thinkage of Squattage, that in the squat, we establish our knee position and back angle early, and then just lower our hips into the hole and raise them up out of the hole. This is a very simple thing to do, but it is not easy, especially at heavy loading. You will note that the teetering and tottering in this approach to the squat is kept to a precise minimum. You teeter at the very start when you unlock your hips and sit back, and you totter when you approach the top on the way up as you stand upright. In between, there is neither seeing nor sawing. Your back angle remains constant, as does your knee position, with neither backing nor forthing, but that's a different video. An extremely common form error in the squat occurs as one approaches the hole, looking for that accursed depth. There's a primitive and unregenerative part of your brain that knows you have to get your butt deeper, and would sell your mother to the Nazis cheap rather than lower your hips one more inch. This primitive paleocortical region is desperate and panicked, and it doesn't care who it hurts, as long as it doesn't have to sit down deep in the hole. Your homo sapiens neocortex really wants to do the right thing, and it's thinking deeper. But this cowardly, unprincipled reptile lobe of your brain responds by having you lean forward and lower your chest instead. And it says, there, that's deeper. See how much closer to the floor you are? Yeah, any closer and you'd face plant. When this crime is committed at significant loading, the karmic repercussions are so instantaneous as to be immensely gratifying, at least to your coach, who would like to think this is an eminently teachable moment. Soon you will learn. As you teeter forward, the bar comes out of the slot, you come onto the ball of your foot, the bar is suddenly a bazillion times heavier, and it just sucks to be you. Oh, and your squat is high by about 7.8 miles because you can't lower both sides of a seesaw at the same time. If you lower your chest in the hole, you can't simultaneously lower your hips because that's like having your cake and eating it too, or like being in two places at the same time, or like being Kanye West and also a classy dude. It just doesn't happen. This error is both a common initial mistake in new lifters and also occurs as form creep with established athletes. In both cases, yelling at them to bury it or sit on it or go deeper will often work, and often not. Some cases are recalcitrant. With hardcore squirrels who simply will not stop leaning, just yelling the same cues won't fix it. Sometimes pause squats help. Box squats can be very helpful by giving the hard target to the ass that even the cheetah reptile lobe can't argue with. You either touch the box or you don't. Still, I have found that it can be a hard error to fix, and it can creep in on anybody from time to time, even, or especially, yours truly. I've stumbled on a cue that you may find helpful in some cases. Part of the problem is that you're giving the reptile lobe a simple task, deeper, that it thinks it can cheat by lowering the chest instead of the hips. 
The fix is to give your lizard brain two simultaneous goals with a simple compound cue. Bar high, hips low. Even the most herpetologically regressive brain can't square this circle by leaning forward and lowering the chest because that would lower the bar. And the cue is to keep the bar high while lowering the hips. Now, I have had considerable success with this cue of late in my athletes and in myself as I get back to the squat after a layoff due to injury with a corresponding hesitance to go to depth at heavy loading. Be aware that this cue, like many others, can have untoward side effects because perfecting form is always a never-ending game of whack-a-mole. In this case, the one I notice the most is that the lifter stops leaning into the hole, but now achieves depth by either relaxing the lumbar and or emulating a more high bar squatty posture by dropping the hips forward and down to create a more vertical back angle with knees more forward, which is not the point and which we will cover in another video coming soon. This complication is usually a much easier fix and indicates the wall of power cue among others. But again, that's for a future video. For now, embrace the cosmic truth that you can't teeter and totter at the same time and focus on lowering your hips into the hole, not your chest. Bar high, hips low. Let me know if it helps. Stay tuned. We've got more great information about staying strong and healthy coming right at you.